The world now sees East Timor as a peaceful and happy place. The scars of the brutal 24-year Indonesian reign still exist, but the East Timorese are forgiving people. A decade into its independence, there are significant signs of change, the largest being Timor Plaza, the nation's first major shopping centre in the heart of one of Dili's poorest suburbs, Komoro. Yet despite the opulence of Timor Plaza, very few East Timorese can actually shop there as most live on less than $1 a day. A cup of coffee at Timor Plaza costs around $4, equivalent to a day's wages. Many observers now believe East Timor's petroleum riches could very well turn into a resources curse. High unemployment, a failing education system and systemic poverty plague East Timor. Despite these problems, Prime Minister Guzmao recently gifted his 53 coalition ministers brand new Toyota four-wheel drives valued at $60,000 each. Acclaimed journalist Jose Bello is amongst many observers who allege the country's resources riches are being plundered through nepotism and corruption. We spent a huge amount of money where this money all goes to, there's a assumptions that this money goes into to several families. If you look at the structure of the government here, it's too big. 53 ministers, it's a confusing for the leaders here to, uh, to organize it, but the money spent is a lot. They're all coming from the poor, they are family. They got the position and they get access to the fund. That's what happened. It's more about their family. Yeah? The project, Ivana minister, a, any minister here, now they are taking care of themselves. Former Fretland parliamentarian Jose Texera warns government mismanagement could very well create a resources curse. I, I, think, I think, as I said, we're at crossroads. The chances are very clearly there that we will head down that track. Um, so far, the investment that has been made from the Petroleum Fund uh, and, you know, a third of uh, the, the wealth up until now of the Petroleum Fund has already been spent, um, but it hasn't been spent in an industrial sector. It hasn't been spent in a productive sector. There's been no uh, real investment uh, into, uh, into a sector that will provide a sustainable uh, economic future for us. It's, it's fundamentally gone on consumption. All of the economic activity that you see is about consumption. Uh, a few years ago, um, the government admitted in the national parliament that 70 cents in every dollar that they put into the annual budget, which is the majority of the GDP, um, that goes straight outside. And it goes where? It goes into acquiring everything, uh, even rice to feed our people all consumable foodstuffs with the exception of a small amount of fruit and vegetable that is produced locally. But even that is dwindling because you see when you have so much money in a kitty like the petroleum fund, the tendency is to spend it faster to acquire these consumable goods uh, because it's much easier than having to put your hard work into uh, producing them. Unemployment has once again become a security risk for East Timor, says Bello. Lack of the you know, job opportunity for the young people is a threat to the security or the stability and of the country. Because if every year the school, the secondary school, or the graduate for the the numbers of graduations increase every year, 10,000 10, minimum. Only 2,000 can go to the university, the national university here. Uh, we can calculate something like 4,000 people going to continue their study to the level of the university, while the others living on the roadsides. And we've got an average annually of 15 to 20,000 young job seekers uh, leaving school, coming onto the job market. Um, people keep talking about the positive fact that we have between six and eight thousand students studying in Indonesian universities and local universities but where are all of these uh, young people all of these graduates 
uh, also going to get jobs. Um, not enough, there, there is not enough employment opportunity in Timor-Leste right now. Um, and I think particularly for the young, uh, I think uh, they're going to be looking at a very serious situation where they're not going to have uh, employment prospects, let alone talk about career prospects. I think there are very few and far between that have uh, genuine vocational career prospects uh, because employment itself is very, very, very limited except to unskilled, uh, to you know, bar waiting, and the civil service keeps growing, but we can't keep that growing. Many young East Timorese, like 22-year-old Amal, missed out on vital education as children due to decades of turmoil and poverty created by their former Indonesian rulers. Although, although Amal lost his chance of education as a child, he now lectures his nine younger siblings on the importance of going to school. The truly forgotten people are East Timor's thousands of orphans as they get next to no support from the government. The Catholic Church, a mainstay in East Timor society for generations, provide the main help for orphans and struggling families. Orphanages such as the Dominica Orphanage, a few kilometres from the country's parliament, receives just 50 bags of rice off the current government every three months to feed more than 70 children. Orphans also get very little help for their education. The government, the government give us only rice and the electricity is free and water, that's all. So that is only the help that we had from the government. We need always help for the children, for their food, for their education, because our aim is really to give a very good education to the children. The East Timor, East Timor government has been urged by aid agencies to lift their assistance to orphanages. If they can, why not? It's supposed to be, you know, they have, uh, if they're really saying that these children are the future of their nations, uh, they have to be concerned about and helping the orphanages. Not only by giving rice, but also for their education, because that is very important.